Hello and welcome to this third lesson looking at computer systems. Um, before we start today, there are three questions on your screen. In the last video, we looked at Archie and Archie was our model to help us remember the computer architecture. Before we start, can you remember what did Archie's head do? What was his right arm used for? And why did we need Archie's left leg? Now, you may be able to use the internet to help you uh, find that previous video. Uh, you may then be able to look through your notes where you will have made an Archie model in your book. Pause the video at this point and make sure you're confident on those three answers before you move on. So as I said, this is lesson three of the year seven unit two computer systems unit. Um, and this unit is looking at types of storage device, uh, which was Archie's left leg. By the end of this lesson, you will understand the term storage device. Uh, you'll understand the three different types of storage device used in modern computer systems, and you'll be able to recommend a storage device for a given scenario. So as a very quick recap, here is the Archie model that we used last time. We said that Archie was a basic cartoon character with two legs and two hands and a head. And each part of Archie represented a bit of the computer architecture. We start with Archie's head or his brain, and that is the CPU. The CPU is where all of the processing takes place, where all of the instructions are processed by the computer to make the applications run. We've got the RAM memory, and that was Archie's arm. The RAM memory is super fast memory, which stores the results of all of the calculations going on inside of the CPU. It stores those as electrical pulses, so it only works while the computer is switched on. And when the computer is switched off, the RAM memory is wiped. We've then got the graphics card as the other arm. The graphics card converts the electrical signals inside of the RAM and the CPU into a picture that we can see on our screen. Without the graphics card, we wouldn't really be able to use a computer because we as human beings wouldn't understand those electrical signals. We've got the input and output devices as one of Archie's legs. That's the way of a human inputting data into the computer and getting information back out. For example, clicking with a mouse and then seeing that click on a screen. And finally, we've got our storage devices and that's Archie's other leg. The storage devices are used to store our applications and our work for the long term. So even when the power is switched off, our computer wouldn't be all that useful if everything on it wiped every time we switched it off. And it's those storage devices that we're going to have a look at in a little bit more depth today. So as I said on the previous slide, we need storage devices so that we can save our work um, and we can save different applications. Our computer wouldn't really be helpful if we had to start from scratch every time we switched it on. RAM is great, but once we switch our power off, the RAM is wiped and therefore we need those storage devices. And you can see a couple of examples along the bottom of your screen in the format of a CD, a USB pen drive and then a hard drive. And we're going to look at each of those today. The first type of storage that we need to understand are called optical storage devices. Optical devices use a laser to scan a reflective spinning disc. Now we'd normally think about a CD when we think of that. So the CD spins very quickly and there is a laser that reads data from the disc. Um, and that data is stored in the forms of little dots and little divots in the, in the disc. And the flat areas are then known as lands and the hollow or the pits are known as pits. Uh, and that will be used to represent binary, which we'll look at later on in this unit. So when we think about optical devices, you probably think of CDs, but in that category, we've also got DVDs and then Blu-ray discs. CDs are normally used for music, DVDs are usually used for films, and Blu-ray are then used for either 4K high definition films or uh, PlayStation games, Xbox games, that kind of thing. So I'd like you to pause the video at this point and have a look at the three questions on your screen. Uh, number one, find the term optical storage in your books. Now you've got the previous slide, try and remember that if you can, but if not, flick back. I'd then like you to use the internet to find the advantages and disadvantages of optical devices. You can write the advantages in green and the disadvantages in red. 
Okay, so what are the good things about CDs and DVDs? What are the bad things about CDs and DVDs? And if you've ever used a CD, you might be able to think of a couple of the bad things if you think about songs skipping um, and why that might be. Pause the video at this point, give yourself about 10 minutes and move on when you're ready. So here's the sort of thing you might have come up with. The, uh, the definition I've copied from the, the previous slide. I've then done my advantages and disadvantages. So uh, optical devices such as CDs are very, very cheap. You can buy blank CDs for pennies. You can buy a pack of 100 of them for a couple of pounds on Amazon. Um, and if you look after them, they should last a very long time. If you put your CD in a case and you put that on your shelf and you come back in 100 years, the CD should still be pretty okay. Disadvantages though, not all computer systems have a CD slot anymore, so your mobile phone won't, uh, if the modern MacBooks don't have CD slots anymore, so not all devices will be able to use a CD. They can also be scratched very easily if they're not looked after, and if you've used CDs for music um, and they skip, that's because there's a scratch and the laser's getting confused. The laser's confused whether it's a, a, a hollow or a pit um, or a land that it's looking at. Is it a, an indent or is it a flat area of the disc? And it doesn't know because it's such a deep scratch. Uh, they're also quite slow and they don't store a huge amount of data. So a CD can store about 700 megabytes, uh, a DVD 4.5 gigabytes and then a Blu-ray up to about 50 gigabytes of data which isn't a huge amount nowadays um, and they're fairly slow. So definite advantages, very very cheap. Um, if you look after them, they'll last a long time, but also a number of disadvantages, which is why we're seeing less optical devices now. And as I say, things like the expensive MacBook Pros don't come with a CD drive at all. The second type of storage device that we need to know about are things called magnetic storage devices. Now, you've probably heard of those in the word hard disks, and hard disks are an example of magnetic storage devices. They still use a disc, but the disc is hidden inside of a metal box like the one at the bottom of your screen. The metal disc spins and has magnetized sections, meaning a one, and demagnetized sections, meaning a zero. Now again, we'll look more at that in the binary topic. But again, there's a spinning disc and a magnetic arm that reads that disc a bit like an old-fashioned record player. Those sections are really, really tiny, so a hard disk can store lots and lots of data. Uh, that hard disk is sort of a generic term for this idea of a magnetic storage device. As with the previous uh, optical storage slide, I'd like you to do a very similar activity. I'd like you to pause at this point and spend the next 10 minutes defining what does the term magnetic storage mean, and you can use the internet to expand that definition if you need to and then the advantages in green and the disadvantages in red. Pause the video at this point, give yourself about 10 minutes uh, and complete that like the previous one. Pause now and the answers are coming up. So as before, I've copied the definition from the previous slide. You might have been able to find a better one of those online. I know BBC Bite Size has got uh, lots of detail on these things. The advantages are that magnetic storage devices can store huge amounts of data. They are by far the biggest one and can store masses of data. They're more expensive than op optical devices, but they are still fairly cheap when you consider how much they can store. The disadvantages, well, they are still fairly slow. There's a disc that spins very, very quickly, so they're very susceptible to damage. If you drop the hard drive and it twists or bends just a tiny amount, the disc won't spin properly anymore. They also need to be kept away from any other kind of magnet. If you watch any kind of hacker film when the FBI comes and the, uh, the hacker runs a magnet alongside their computer, that wipes all of the data uh, and it won't be able to be got, gotten back or recovered. So that's good for the hackers in the crime films, not so good for us if we accidentally put a magnet next to our PC and then find all of our data is gone. The final type of storage device that we need to understand are called solid state storage devices. Now these are the most modern, these are the newest type of storage device. 
um, and they use non-volatile RAM memory. That means RAM memory that can remember the information even when it's switched off. They are very, very fast and they have no moving parts. Because they work with electricity, there's nothing moving inside, meaning they will uh, not break quite so easily. An example is a USB stick, but also an SSD, and you might have heard of that in terms of posh laptops like the MacBook having SSD drives. That means a solid state drive. Uh, the SSDs are also used in the PlayStation 5, um, and that that's what makes the game so quick to load. So, as a last one, I'd like you to define the term solid state storage uh, or SSD, solid state drives, in your books. I'd like you to find the advantages and the disadvantages in red and green. Pause the video at this point, give yourself about 10 minutes, and the answers are coming up. So the definition is on the screen and you can pause the video if you need to get that one down. The advantages though are that SSDs are very, very quick, very fast. They're also very durable because there's no moving parts. If you think about a car, cars normally break wherever there's a moving bit, the suspension or the engine. Moving bits do wear down over time. As SSDs have no moving parts, they last a very long time and they're silent. Uh, they also come in lots of different varieties, so we can have solid state drives for laptops, big solid state drives, but we can also have smaller ones like USB sticks for example that are still very very portable. The disadvantage is that unfortunately they are very very expensive, there is a reason the PlayStation 5 costs £500 and that's predominantly because uh, the SSD is very very expensive. They can also store less information than a magnetic drive, um, so you can store less on there. A final challenge activity for today. Uh, in PowerPoint, using one slide per answer, I'd like you to outline what type of storage device you would recommend to each of the following users. So pretend you're working in Curry's or PC World, and the following three people have come into the shop and are looking to buy a storage device. I'd like you to outline which one you would recommend and why. So we've got Elise, and Elise is looking to build a gaming PC. She's not too worried about cost, but she does want her games to load very, very quickly. Ethan, Ethan is in a band and he wants to send a demo of his band's music to a record company in the post. And then Karen, who needs to store a database of products that her company sells. They sell over a million items and it's really important she can, she can store all of them. I'd then like you to come up with one final user of your choice and think what uh, you would recommend. So I would do that in PowerPoint, one answer per slide. Uh, pause the video at this point because I've got some model answers that you might be able to, uh, to use to compare your answers when you are finished. So I think this is one of those questions where there's not really a right and wrong answer as long as you've justified and given a solid reason why you think each user should buy the storage device you've recommended. For me, Elise should buy a solid state drive because it will provide the best performance and it will mean that her games will load very, very quickly. It is going to cost a bit more, but it's probably worth it if what she's really interested in is the speed. Ethan, I think, should buy an optical disc and probably a CD. CDs are really cheap, so he can send it in the post, and if it does get lost, it's not going to cost him a huge amount. They're also fairly durable, so as long as he sends it in a case, the CD should arrive uh, fine. They're also fairly small, so if Ethan sends it in sort of a normal envelope, he won't need many stamps um, and shouldn't be that expensive for him to post. I think Karen should probably use a magnetic hard disk drive. Uh, she's got lots of products to store and we know that magnetic disk is the biggest and will hopefully be able to store those million products. They are a little bit slower than an SSD, um, but that's probably not going to be an issue because I'm guessing Karen's only going to look at one product at a time. So if it's a little bit slower to load, that's probably not the end of the world. Now again, those are just my answers. As long as you've given a decent uh, justification and a decent reason why you think the person should buy the storage device, uh, that's fine. These are just the model ones that I think I would have put. So hopefully you now understand what the term storage device means. Uh, you hopefully know the three different types of storage device that we need to know in the GCSE Computer Science course. 
and you're able to recommend one of those for a given scenario. If not, flip back through this video and have another go. Uh, message your teacher on Google Classroom or drop a comment in the comments section below. Thank you very much for watching.